Today we're going to be solving and graphing inequalities. And before we do, let's look at some symbols of inequality. These symbols are used for equations instead of an equal sign. The first symbol is an arrow pointing to the right, and that means greater than. Now if you see an arrow like that pointing to the right with a bar under it, that means greater than or equal to. The arrow pointing to the left means less than. And the arrow pointing to the left with a bar under it means less than or equal to. Now this is how you read those symbols if you're reading left to right, which means your variable needs to be on the left to make sense of this. So the way that you would read this is x is greater than 4. It can't be 4. It can be 4.1. It can be 4.001. It can be 4.000. As long as it's greater than 4, we're okay. But it can't be 4. So it can be 5, 6, 7, 8, on to infinity. But it can't be 4, and it can't be less than 4. X is greater than 4. Also, Here's a hint. Watch these arrows as I put them up. They're always pointing toward the smaller number. How do we read this? X is greater than or equal to 4. Now that being the case, it's the same as the other symbol except that the answer can be 4. It can be 4. It can be 4.001. It can be 5, 6, 7, 8 but it can't be less than 4. It cannot be 3.99999. It can't be that. It can't be anything that is less than 4. Remember, that arrow is pointing toward the smaller number. So x is greater than or equal to 4. Well, now x is less than 4. That means it can't be 4 can't be 5, it can't be 4 or anything greater than 4, but it can be 3.999999999. It can be 3, it can be 2, it can be negative 1, it can be negative 8, on into infinity, on into negative infinity. And that, of course, is x is less than or equal to 4. And it means the same thing as our less than symbol, except that it actually can equal 4. Now, let's graph an inequality. So x is less than 2. Now, the way I graph this is different than the way Mr. Wallace graphs this. He uses a C and a backwards C to denote less than. And... I have never seen anybody do that. I'm not sure where he got that from. Uh, I've Googled it, and I couldn't find anybody that uses it. Uh, I've been through several math classes myself. I've never seen that. So we're going to do it my way, because my way is the way you're probably going to see it. Uh, well, I can guarantee it's the way you're going to see it on the SAT and the ACT. So we are going to start at 2. In the middle of our graph is 0, and this is a line graph. This is not an x-y coordinate system. So it's just a line graph, and the center is 0, and as we go out in a positive direction, you can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's 5, just like the x-y coordinate system. I've marked 5 and negative 5, and... So if we go out in this direction, we are going to be going in a negative direction. Now, which direction are we going to go? Well, it's less than 2. Now, the circle around the 2 says that's where we're starting, but it's not that. Okay, and we'll see what it looks like if we say that x is less than or equal to 2. But for right now, it's less than 2. So can it be 3? No, 3 is not less than 2. Can it be 1? Yeah, it can be 1. 0? Yeah, 0 is less than 2. 
What about negative five? Is negative five less than two? Yeah, any negative number is less than any positive number. So we're gonna be going out in this direction. And so we're gonna draw a line starting here at the circle, going all the way out here. And that's really hard to see. The line over here is a little bit darker, but the arrow gives it away. That's the direction we're going in. And as you do these graphs, you're gonna see that the line that you draw is usually a little difficult to see. And that is my problem here. But anyways, we're starting at two. It can be any number less than two. It can't be two, and that circle around two says, hold off on the actual value of two. It can be 1.9999999999, but it can't be two. And it can be any number less than two. We already went over that. Out into negative infinity, and that's what that arrow means. Now, what if that had said x is less than or equal to two? Well, then you would take that circle and you would color it in just like that. And that tells us the same thing as the less than symbol, except that it can be two. It's not just starting at two, it can be two. And Mr. Wallace uses a different symbol there uh, for the equal sign that is less than or equal to. He uses a bracket, a bracket facing in the same direction as the arrow. And if it's uh, going off in the other direction, the bracket's gonna face in the other direction. You don't need to know that. Uh, that's not what is normally used in math. We're gonna do it my way. And so, by the way, when you're doing your homework and uh, you're checking your answers, if you see that C, just remember that that means uh, less than. If you see the bracket, it means less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, depending on which way the bracket is facing. And let's try to solve an inequality. Okay, this is five minus two X is greater than 11. And we're gonna solve this pretty much the same way we would solve a regular equation. There's going to be one difference and we're gonna to get to that, but for right now, treat that inequality sign as an equal sign and let's try to get the negative two X alone. That's right, we'll get all the units on one side by subtracting five from the positive five. Let's bring all that down. So negative two X is greater than six. And let's isolate that X. We're gonna divide it by two, not negative two. We're gonna divide it by two. Negative two X divided by two is gonna be negative X. And six divided by two is three. So negative X is greater than three. And we're gonna multiply both sides by negative one. Now I'm not gonna put the negative ones on both sides anymore. You know what happens when I put a negative one on both sides. We just change the sign. So when I do that, when I multiply by negative one, we're gonna have X and negative three. But the inequality sign is gonna flip. It's gonna go in the other direction. And that's the only thing you need to know about inequalities that is different from the equal sign is that when you multiply by negative one or divide by negative one, that you flip the inequality sign. So X is less than negative three. We flip the inequality sign. Now, you can do one of two things. You can just remember that that's the rule. Why do we flip the inequality sign? Or I'm going to tell you. Negative X, what's negative X? Negative means the opposite. Well, what's the opposite of greater than? It's less than. So when we take that negative sign away, we have to do the opposite of the inequality sign. And we don't do that to the equal sign because what is the opposite of equal? There is no opposite of equal. Equal is equal. So we don't need to do that for an equal sign. But let's go back to the way it was that's right, negative X is greater than three. 
and rather than multiplying times negative 1, why don't I move x to the other side and bring that down, move the 3 to the other side, bring all that down. So now we have negative 3 is greater than x, or if you read that backwards, it would be x is less than negative 3. Remember that arrow is always pointing to the smaller number. So maybe that's more information than you need to know, but that's why it works that way. It does make sense. Now, let's graph that real quick. And the less than symbol means we're going to circle negative 3. And we're going to zoom off into infinity in a negative direction. So we're starting at negative 3. It is not negative 3. It is less than negative 3. So it could be negative 4, negative 5, and we've gone through that before. On off to negative infinity, and that's what that arrow means. And let me give you one other hint about this. If you're a little unsure which way the arrow goes, if you can't figure it out or you have trouble or it seems tricky to you for one reason, Look at this arrow here, okay? Now, this only works when x is on the left-hand side. So when you're reading x is less than negative 3, look at that arrow. Which way is it pointing? It's pointing the same way this arrow is too. So that's the direction you're going to go off in, the way your inequality arrow is pointing. You're going to go off in the same direction. And so there are more examples in the book if you want to go through more of this. And if you do your homework, you're going to get a lot better at this. Now in Mr. Wallace's lesson, he uses something called interval notation. We did not get into that, and we're not going to get into that. It's not something that is commonly used. So if you see that in the homework, you can disregard that and you can be assured that it will not be on the test.